Hey, what's up? Welcome to this video. I'm just going to quickly show you how to fix the soap dispenser unit on your Beko or similar dishwasher. And they're quite simple. The problem with mine is when you try to press it down to close it, this is the new one, so obviously that does latch fine, but the, the one in the unit simply just spins back up again. It's really hard to get it to close. So it's quite a common problem on these. It's very simple to fix, so hopefully this helps you out. The tools you're going to need are either a drill driver with a Phillips number two bit, or just the regular Phillips number two screwdriver. This does give you a little bit more feel. I generally favor the screwdriver, certainly for putting the screws in when you're using wooden doors on the front of them for integrated appliances. And obviously you'll need a replacement part. I'll put a link in the description for mine and my specific model of dishwasher. So I'm gonna time the job, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do is you've got to take this front this white panel off the front of the dishwasher. This has got to come off. Like I said, with an integrated one, you need to take the, the wooden panel off the front first. The way to do that, these two screws down here, or maybe these two up here, you'll have to figure it out. Taking those two out should release some some of the pressure on the on the front panel. There might be a little bit of Velcro on the back of it. You push it off and then you, you, you pull it up and there's generally a couple of little hooks up here to sort of pull it up and, and latch from there. As this is a standard non-integrated appliance, uh, this is a little bit easier. So I'm just literally going to go around all of these Phillips screws. And it's funny to use the drill driver for removing, for sure. And eventually we'll be able to get this top panel off and then the rest of the door will come after that. Okay, so now we're taking all the screws out, the panel will start to fall away. As you can see, it's still attached. There's a couple of plastic rivets or, or rivets of the plastic coating, I think maybe, uh, holding it in just there and there. We don't need to remove that any further, so we can leave that as it is, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so now that all we've got to do is just remove these two connectors from the actual soap and uh, rinse aid module. So the first one we'll do is this one here with the blue and purple. And as you can see, there's a lug this side and there's another one on the other side. And all you need to do is just release that lug. So I've just got an electrical screwdriver here, thin blade, thin flat bladed one. Give it a bit of a bit of tension on it and then just give it a bit of extra push on the other side and that'll pop out quite nicely. That releases the tension. Uh, and we'll go around and do the other one. This other one is a different design. It's just simply pushed in. There's just a little latch just here, which has to be pushed out of the way. And it should come straight out. Yeah, simple as that. So now the electrical's removed, you can see here there's these metal lugs holding it in. And we just want to release the tension on those, do the same underneath, and it should just push out of the other side. It really is as simple as that. So again, flat bladed screwdriver underneath. You could hear it click there and just start to work your way around. You might have to do some of them twice, but just start to work your way around, Put, apply a little bit of pressure to it, and we can do it down the side as well. And you can see the more we go, the more it's starting to move a little bit. Once it starts to go, you can always get one hand on the other side and give it a pull through, and it'll just come through with a bit of bit more encouragement, but whatever you do, don't force it, okay? Obviously a new one, fitting is a reversal of removal. For those of you that are familiar with Haynes manuals, <laughs> uh, it goes in like this, obviously, same same way as the old one. And let's push it straight in. Maybe give it a clean up first. A little bit of moisture, a tiny bit of moisture on the on the edge as it goes in. It will actually help keep it waterproof, give the seal something to grip on too, but we obviously don't want any water going on the electric, so I'll clean it all off this side. Okay, there we go. Now this is going to be a case of just pushing it in. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of wiggle there. That's not going in. There you go. It just needs a little, a real push. Hear the clicking go as you push it in to make sure it's got sufficient tension on there to maintain that watertight seal. And you can obviously go and check. That is all in properly now and underneath we'll do the same. That's in okay, that's in okay, that's in okay. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, I'm just gonna check those top ones again. <sighs> Not sure about that one. That's it, that's definitely on okay now. So they're all okay, they're all okay. Yep, they're fine. So that's it, so that's in now. And it's just a simple matter now, just connecting the connectors back up. And then what do we remove them? And just pushing it in, as simple as that. Make sure the lug's engaged and holding it in. You do not want to damage that lug. And the new one, there's the grey housing, has actually stayed on there, so we'll have to remove it from here. Same again, let's just remove that lug, this little lug here. Just pull it back and then it should come out. Yeah, get a screwdriver under there. That removes that lug and should be able to pull it, pull it straight out there. And that'll go in quite comfortably now. 
Now, as you can see, there is a piece of it's essentially see-through gaffer tape there, which I believe was holding that wire in place just there. So we're going to replace that because we are going to do it properly. Okay, so I've got a bit of gaffer tape. It's going to um, put it into place over that cable there. It just acts as a bit of a strain relief. That should do the trick. That's going to need a bit of tape on it as well, I think. Okay, so I've just put a bit of tape on there to hold that in place, so that'll be much better now. Let's pull this back up now, pull the main door out, and there are some locating lugs along this top panel which need to go in these locating holes here. Okay, looks like that gaffer tape was in the wrong place after all. Just going to pull this out, put it in the top there. There's, they're located now. Now it can be put in and I'll do any chance of getting this to work. Now's the time. Okay, now that has gone on. You can now close it up. With it all aligned, you've got to keep your hand on the front panel and the metal panel as well. And this is where your actual screwdriver will come in very handy. You've got these slightly larger, larger screws, though, for this front panel here. Get the first of those aligned. You don't want to be using a drill driver for the first one because very, very easy to slip, drop it, and honestly, I think you just want your first one in solidly after that. No problem, get this one on over here. I'm just going to set my torque on my drill driver to uh, very, very low torque because there's plastic thread in there, so easy to break. I'm going to put it on the very lowest setting on one. I can always go around and tighten them up with it manually by hand afterwards because you get a much better feel for it by hand. See how that's clicking off, really low torque. That's absolutely perfect, I'm quite happy with that. And I can put the remainder of the screws on now and it should be absolutely fine. That's it, that should be absolutely fine now. 17 minutes, 30 seconds, nice easy job. And you're set. One final top tip before you go, a professional dishwasher engineer told me this, make sure that when you're using a dishwasher, even if you use the three-in-one tablets, which most people do, you put them in there, get some dishwasher detergent as well, you know, the loose detergent, it usually comes in a cardboard box. And before every wash, just sprinkle a little bit of it inside the door. The reason that works is when the dishwasher starts operating, it'll get some, draw some cold water in and then it will start to circulate that around the dishwasher doing effectively a kind of a pre-wash, so knocking all the major debris off of the, the dishes in the dishwasher. Then once it's warmed that water up, then it releases the tablet and then it starts with the real washing. So if you put a bit of loose detergent in first, that's going to get mixed in with that initial cold pre-wash and make it that much more effective. He told me that would help prolong the life of the dishwasher as well. I think something to do with getting the, the major debris off quickly and getting it into the filter, keeping the, uh, the spray arms clear as well. The jets often get clogged in, on there, etc. But regardless, it will certainly help clean your dishes a lot better. And especially if you've got anything with, uh, with major cooking debris on it, you'll definitely want to be doing that. He also said it's more effective to use a separate detergent, rinse aid and salt than it is to use one of the three in one tablets. Obviously that's not everyone's bag. However, uh, I would definitely recommend getting a bit of loose detergent in there. The other thing you said was, if you use the dry dishwasher tablets and you don't have any of the loose detergent, you can just crumble a bit of that tablet again inside the, the inside door there and that will have the same effect. So top tip there to prolong the life of your dishwasher and certainly to get a better result on washing your dishes. I hope that helps. Do please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It helps support the channel so I can produce better videos for you in the future and for sure there will be more useful tips coming out on the channel very soon. Stay tuned.